Hi everyone, in this video we'll be covering sections 2.1, Demand, and 2.2, Supply. Firstly, we'll define demand. The quantities of goods or services that consumers are willing and able to buy at different prices. Both of these conditions involved, the willingness and ability must be met to truly demand something. For example, I am a huge Chicago White Sox baseball fan and I would love to own the club. I'm willing, but I'm not a billionaire, so therefore I'm not able. I don't demand it. Masks have become quite important lately, but many protesters, let's call them Karens, refuse to wear them. At their low cost, protesters are able to buy the masks, but they're not willing, so therefore don't really demand them. The law of demand, like a lot of economics, with common sense. You already know it, and as the price of a good or service decreases, people are willing to buy more of it, and vice versa. Just common sense. This relationship is reflected in the demand curve that we see here. The curve shows how many units consumers are willing to buy at each price. So the price is high, not many, as the price lowers, much more. Law of demand. But demand also changes due to other factors. An increase in demand will shift this curve to the right and a decrease will shift it to the left. Let's look at some of those factors. So we're gonna look at five factors here. We'll go through each in more detail. So taste and preferences, price of related goods, income, future price expectations, and number of consumers. Really important to note that price does not shift demand. Price is already accounted for in the demand curve, how, how much people are willing and able to buy. So taste and preferences. We can sort of split this up into three little ideas. So we get exposed to advertising. Advertising works we know it works because they spend billions of dollars on it every year. It must work. It makes us demand a higher quantity at each price. Related to this is trends. Things become popular, so we demand more of these things. Recently, we've seen an explosion in the popularity of false eyelashes. There was the man bun trend, and I'm sure you used to see a lot of fidget spinners. There can also just be new information that comes to light which affects our demand. For example, a good defense against deadly pandemics is for us to wear masks. Increasing demand. And a bit further in the past, it came out that eating imported frozen berries could give you hepatitis because they'll be grown in human feces. This decreased demand, this new information. Second factor. Price of related goods can be affected by the price of another related good. Not the price of the good, but the price of another good. One way is if the goods are substitutes like Coke and Pepsi. If the price of Pepsi increases, it makes sense that suddenly more consumers will demand Coke, shifting its demand curve to the right. There are also complements like printers and printer ink. If the printer price comes down, we know that due to the law of demand, people will buy more printers. And if people are buying more printers, it probably means they're going to buy more printer ink. So it will, uh, the price of printers will affect the demand for printer ink. Income. The amount of income consumers have, of course, affects our demand. Normal goods like takeaway coffee, and hiring cars will tend to be will tend to be demanded more when our incomes increase as we're more able to buy and we want more of these things generally. But then there are inferior goods. As a poor uni student, I used to make my spaghetti with regular mints from Coles, but now that my income has increased, I'm less willing to buy that. I'll buy the five star mints. My demand for inferior mints has decreased. 
We learned before that price does not shift demand, however, our expectations of price do. For example, if you know all the stuff you, you want is about to go on sale, are you going to buy it now or are you going to wait? You would wait. We see the opposite of this with house prices in Australia. We've seen them rise for so long that we expect them to keep on rising. This makes people want to buy them before the price goes up. It increases their demand. This a famous example is tulip mania in the Netherlands in the 17th century. As prices kept on rising, people kept on buying them, hoping to on-sell them at a profit. Prices skyrocketed past 10 times the salary of a skilled worker. Finally, the number of consumers will affect demand. More consumers will mean that more will be willing and able to pay. It's also useful to think of the type of consumer that's there. If an area has an influx of young families, they'll be more likely to demand childcare services. Whereas if an area has an aging population, there'll be increased demand for retirement services. In this course, you need to illustrate and explain these shifts in demand with clear communication. Here's an example. I've labeled the axes and curves clearly, P, Q, D, D, uh, D and D1, I should say. I've put a, an arrow to show the direction of the shift. So at a glance, you can tell that demand has increased. And in my text, I've stated the reason, increasing consumer income. And I've made direct, specific reference to the curve labels. So D to D1. So I'm not just leaving the diagram there to do its thing. I'm referring to it in the text. So you've probably learned similar things in other subjects, like to always refer to data in a table. It's the same. Always refer to your diagrams. Now let's look at supply. Supply is the different quantities of goods that producers are willing and able to sell at different prices. So we've got those same things, willing and able, which should mean that if you know demand, you should know supply. Uh, law of supply is a bit trickier for some. As the price increases, producers want to supply more. This is because the higher price implies greater profitability, and they want to produce where the profits are. There are a range of factors that will shift the supply curve. I want to emphasize again that price will not shift the curve. The price is already taken into account as is one of the axes. A shift in the curve is independent of price. So we'll look at each of these in a little bit of detail. We'll go through them much more deeply in class, of course, with exercises. So a change in cost of production will shift supply. When Willy Wonka started using his slaves, the Oompa Loompas, instead of regular workers, this would have made each chocolate bar more profitable. So we would have been more willing to produce, so, so we would have been willing to produce much more, and that would shift the supply curve to the right. A real life example is how the cost of microchips has fallen dramatically, making all electronics much cheaper to produce. Also, the price of oil is significant as it comes into the cost of production of most goods. Any good way you've got to transport things, it's affected by the price of oil. Uh, the price can change drastically and when it increases, it can increase the cost of production, uh, which would reduce its profitability and make producers less willing to supply. The number of firms in a market will affect the supply. For example, there was a time when there were only a few food trucks in Adelaide. Supply was low. Then they saw the opportunities for profit and supply increased rapidly and now we've got countless. An increase in technology can increase supply, mostly due to lowering cost of production. If technology didn't lower the cost of production, then firms just wouldn't use it. 50 years ago, a factory would have been full of people now it's more likely to be filled with robots such as these. Decreasing costs will increase profitability so firms will be willing to supply more and able to supply more. We will see over and again the impact that the government has on markets, so government intervention. 
Here it can affect supply through taxes and subsidies. A tax, like the ones we impose on alcohol, increases the cost to the producer. In addition to their cost of making the drinks with all the ingredients, the bottles, the, the cost of distributing the drinks out to the, the bottle shops, they also now have to give the government money for each bottle they sell. It's essentially just an increase in the cost of production. It, that of course decreases profitability, meaning they are less willing to supply. A subsidy is the opposite of a tax. Each solar panel, panel that gets supplied in Australia is subsidised. The firms get given money for each one that they sell. Effectively, costs of production are reduced. Profitability is increased and producers are more willing to supply. Expectations of price will affect supply. When a big event like the Olympics or the World Cup comes to a country, people see the huge tourism influx and understanding scarcity, they think that prices for services like accommodation and prostitution will increase. This leads to more suppliers looking to make profits. Here, just the expectation of a higher price will lead more producers to the market. So more people will set up little Airbnbs and little little prostitution businesses uh, when, when these big events are coming. Then there's the issue of uh, the price of related goods. So very much like demand, price of related goods will impact supply. Meat is a good example. We can understand that if beef shanks, uh, which is these parts of a cow, if they explode in popularity, the price will rise. Now, I asked my local butcher, and what he told me was that you can't just grow beef shanks. You have to grow the entire cow. This means that farmers will be more incentivized to raise beef due to the greater price they can get for the shanks. But this means that every other cut of beef will increase in supply. There will be more ribs because there was an increase in price for shanks. We say that ribs and shanks therefore have joint supply. Then there is the issue of competitive supply. Oh, an increase in price of a good will decrease the supply of another. This has been seen in North America. They've been making biofuel from corn crops, which has been profitable. And as they use the same resources, this has decreased the supply of regular eating corn. Profit seeking corn growers will grow biofuel corn, but they at the expense of regular eating corn. So the price shifts the supply. So the increase in price of biofuel corn has decreased the supply of regular eating corn. Again, looking quickly at using our communication skills. In this course, you need to illustrate and explain shifts in supply. Here's an example. Uh, again, I've labeled my axes and curves clearly. I've used an arrow to show the direction so you can see at a glance what's happening. And I've stated the reason due to the Australian government subsidizing solar panels, cost of production decrease. Now, if you're communicating better than I, you would spell words correctly, but you know what I mean. Um, cost of production is decrease and supply increases from S to S1. That's clear production, uh, clear <laughs> communication. So again, we're going to go through a lot of exercises in class to really get these ideas down. So I will see you there.